Hello everyone, in this new series of educational videos, we will be learning about the important concepts as well as the assessment and treatment strategies based on the neurodynamic treatment approach. Neurodynamic treatment can be utilized by the physiotherapist to assess and treat musculoskeletal disorders by understanding its relation and interdependency with the nervous system. Neurodynamics treatment approach has been developed by Dr. Michael Shecklock, who is a physiotherapist practicing in Adelaide, Australia. Michael Shecklock, sir, is credited for revolutionizing the neural mobilization approach, which majority of the physiotherapy students study during their undergraduate and postgraduate program. Now, majority of the times, the physiotherapy students are only taught how to assess a nerve mobility using the nerve tension test which demands the nerve to be put under a stretch or tension and also to restore the nerve mobility using the nerve stretching or nerve tensioning exercises. But after learning the concepts of the neurodynamics treatment approach, the students as well as the physiotherapy practitioners will be able to treat musculoskeletal disorders in relation to the nervous system in a more comprehensive manner. Now the information that will be shared in this video series has been taken from an excellent book written by Dr. Michael Shecklock sir and I would highly recommend that every physiotherapy student as well as practitioner must have this book to study neurodynamics in detail. The book name is Clinical Neurodynamics a new system of musculoskeletal treatment. So let's first try and understand what do we mean by the neurodynamics. Now, neurodynamics can be defined as the clinical application of the mechanics and physiology of the nervous system as they relate to each other and their integration with the musculoskeletal functions. So now let's simplify this. This can be simplified after one understands how the nervous system is integrated and interrelated with the musculoskeletal system and this is what we are going to cover in this introductory video and we are going to understand the integration and interrelationship between the nervous system and the musculoskeletal system as a three-part system. The three-part system serves as the conceptual model and framework for the neurodynamic treatment approach and in this the tissues of the body are classified and categorized with respect to their relationship with the nervous system into three parts namely the mechanical interface, neural structures and innervated tissues. By understanding this three part system it will become very easy to comprehend and understand that many neural problems can in fact have their origin or source in the musculoskeletal system and vice versa that is many musculoskeletal disorders can have their origin or cause in the nervous system. So let's first understand what do we mean by mechanical interface. Now mechanical interface can be simply called as nerve bed. This means that all those tissues that reside next to the nervous system are referred to as mechanical interface such as the skin, fascia, muscles, tendons, bones, ligaments, blood vessels, intervertebral discs, etc. Now tissues that forms the mechanical interface can also be considered as the container for the nervous system and therefore any movement of the mechanical interface is also going to produce movements in the nervous system as well. Like for example if we consider this whole body as the container of the nervous system and so therefore during our daily day-to-day -day activities as we bend or elongate our body as we turn or twist our body to produce certain movements our nervous system moves accordingly. This relationship between the movement of the nervous system and the mechanical interface can become more clearer by a simple example. Now let's say if I bend my elbow in this way what actually happens is that the myofascial tissues on the posterior side elongates and the myofascial tissues on the anterior side shortens 
and the same thing happens with the nerves that are passing through these mechanical interfaces. So therefore we can say that the ulnar nerve also elongates along with the elongation of the myofascial tissue because it is lying on the posterior side behind the elbow joint and similarly the median nerve is shortening as it is lying on the anterior aspect of the arm and forearm. So now let's briefly discuss the second part of the three part system that is the neural structures. Neural structures simply constitute those that form up the nervous system. This includes our brain, our spinal cord, the cranial nerves, the peripheral nerve roots, the brachial and the lumbosacral plexus, peripheral nerves and their related connective tissues. The connective tissues are formed by the dura mater, arachnoid mater and pia mater in the central nervous system and the endoneurium, perineurium, epineurium and mesoneurium in the peripheral nervous system. The functions of the neural structures can be divided into two that is the mechanical functions and the physiological functions. The important mechanical functions of the nervous system are tension, compression and movement whereas the important physiological functions of the nervous system include the axonal transport, impulse conduction, intraneural blood flow, inflammation and mechanosensitivity. Now what is important to be noted is that both the mechanical and physiological functions are interdependent on one another. What simply means is that if there is an altered mechanics or mechanical behavior of the nerves then it is going to affect the nerve physiology and vice versa if there is altered nerve physiology then it is going to result in the poor nerve mechanics. We will be talking more about the nerve mechanics and physiology in our upcoming videos which will make this even more clearer. So now let's move on to the third part of the three part system which constitutes the innervated tissues. Innervated tissues simply refers to those that are supplied or innervated by the neural structures or the nervous system like for example the skin, fascia, muscles, bones, blood vessels etc. Now what is important and interesting to note is that the nervous system interacts physiologically with the innervated tissues in both the afferent as well as the efferent direction. Efferent interaction takes place in the form of the motor conduction or impulses that travel from the nervous system towards the innervated tissues and the afferent interaction takes place in the form of the sensory impulses that travel from the innervated tissue towards the nervous system. By understanding this interaction it becomes easier to acknowledge and appreciate that any problem that actually originates within the nervous system can reflect as a poor functioning of the innervated tissues and similarly any problem that actually originates within the innervated tissue can reflect as a neural problem. Another important thing that needs to be mentioned about the innervated tissues is that it provides therapist with the opportunity to actually move the nervous system. Like for example if the physiotherapist wants to add tension or move the femoral nerve and its nerve roots then all he or she has to do is stretch the innervated tissue that is the quadriceps muscle. And so we see that when the quadriceps muscle is put on a stretch it adds tension to the femoral nerve and this can be utilized for the assessment and treatment purposes. Similarly other examples can also be given to explain how moving the innervated tissues actually moves the nervous system. Like for example if we put stretch to the hamstring muscle then it is going to move and put tension on the sciatic nerve. Similarly adding tension and stretching the calf muscle is going to move the tibial nerve. It is also important and interesting to note that Many a times treating the innervated tissues is the best way to actually treat what seems to be a neural problem. And this is so because as we have now understood that there is an interrelationship, interdependency and integration between the nervous system and the musculoskeletal system. So as we discuss more and more in our upcoming videos, we will be able to grasp the neurodynamics approach 
and utilize it for assessing and treating patients in a more comprehensive manner. I sincerely hope that this introductory video is going to be helpful, especially for the physiotherapy students. See you all in our next part. Till then, keep learning, keep sharing and stay connected.